and working with uh, Lexi Sanchegrin, who's been with uh, Team BC for four years and works with uh, Belmont High School on Vancouver Island. And uh, we've got a few drills we're going to work with the DBs today. Alexi, uh, what's the first one? First one, uh, I like to start the indie period uh, with a uh, fast feet drill, and there's different variations that uh, you can work on uh, right now. Uh, call it like the sewing machine, so we're going to work with uh, having quick feet, working on a back pedal position uh, from one cone to the other, and working our peripheral vision. And as soon as we see the second cone, we're going to go uh, and do a straight back pedal afterwards. Uh, coaching points that we look at obviously is uh, quick feet. Uh, defensive backs uh, need to be able to. Uh, change position uh, uh, directions very quickly so we're looking for a quick feet uh, low center of gravity so we can change the direction and uh, good form on the back pedal. Excellent and uh, from there um, what progression drill will we work on will we move on to? Uh, the next row we're going to work on, again, uh, defensive backs is all about being able to play in space and uh, being able to change directions. So uh, the, the second row we're going to do is uh, uh, a man-to-man -man drill where uh, we want to keep leverage. We'll talk often on defense about uh, keeping the proper leverage. So uh, the, first, the drill we're going to do is basically just weaving uh, to be able to keep the, the leverage that we choose to have on defense. Uh, for corners, we want to start... Uh, inside shade most of the time uh, for man-to-man -man coverage using uh, the sideline uh, as a help and for the safeties uh, often we're going to use the free safety as uh, inside help so we're going to be uh, working towards a, an outside shade so we're just working weaving to keep that relationship with the receiver uh, as you're backpedaling. Excellent and uh, working from there that'll be our second drill and uh, the third drill that we're going to work on today is uh, it's an arrow drill, which is uh, very important for every position for defense, but uh, in my opinion, most specifically for defensive backs, again, having to play in space and having to defend uh, very talented athletes. Uh, we try to emphasize the concept with uh, the players that uh, there's no such thing as being one-on-one, -on -one, but it's a, a team concept. So uh, every time that the uh, ball carrier has the ball, we're going to be attacking him from uh, both leverage, uh, outside in and inside out leverage and uh, keeping the proper uh, position so that uh, we can make a, a good tackle on Got to keep low center of gravity, stay low, hips low, set up. Okay, it's Jim back with Dino again. Let's uh, take a look at the first drill here. And what are we looking for in terms of good technique here, Dino, in this first drill? Uh, we're really looking at the level that the players are playing at. They want to have a low pad level, good ankle, knee, and hip bend. Uh, so that their leverage uh, and their ability to change direction is maximized, uh, as well as working the hips and the, and the feet, the feet really working and seeing how smooth the athletes transition from the little uh, quick feet drills into their back pedal. Now we heard the word sewing machine out here. Uh, tell us uh, why we need to see the quick feet in this uh, phase of the uh, workout. The quick feet will allow them to change their direction. They're keeping them underneath the hips. So uh, what we really want to make sure is with a DB, one step or one false step or one step too big uh, in the game of inches that football is, is going to make a difference between a receiver catching the ball and potentially going for a touchdown or a pick for the defense. Now, if you're a coach instructing this, is there any sort of tells out there of players cheating with the quick feet? Uh, right here, what they'll do is they'll not get enough back, uh, back pedal, um, and they'll start doing it almost on the spot and uh, not getting that inch, inching backwards. And the other thing is you'll see them start to get on their heels a little bit too much. Um, and that way they're not having the strength in their ankle bend and not relying on their fast feet, but relying on just pounding and, and obviously playing with flat, flat feet will uh, not allow them to change direction as quickly. Okay, but now we're going to do our tapioca. Okay, we're going to be all facing this way. Okay, we're going to work on our fast feet, open up our hips from one cone to the other. Once you get to this cone, you're sprinting to the cone in front of you, 45 degrees, okay? First group, just go up the imaginary cone, okay, in front of you, okay? You get it? Yeah, so 45 degrees, facing this way, facing this way, tapioca to this cone right here. Once you get here, sprint to the cone ahead of you right here, okay? You're the only guy that doesn't have a cone, okay? Okay, let's go. 
Now, is this putting the two elements together from the first two drills? Yes, it's working uh, the fast feet, working the hips, and then working on a break. So now the, the defensive backs are working their feet, working their eyes, and then breaking with a good, strong burst. So it's putting those fast feet together and then adding a break into it. Drills like this, with working the fast feet and the breaks, uh, should be done every practice uh, to emphasize the key elements of what a defensive back is doing. Okay, we're going to work on our weave within this morning. Okay, we're going to work on our weave within this morning. Okay, we're going to pedal. We're going to weave about two yards. You're going to straighten. You're going to weave, and you're going to weave again. Okay? So first group in front of me right now. Okay? First group, you're going to pedal, weave, settle, weave, settle, weave. We might just have room to do two weaves. We'll see how it goes. Okay? And this is a phase that I would think uh, really tests the flexibility and the, and the versatility uh, coming from the hips. Yeah, and it's uh, really a, it, what it's working on is the uh, defensive backs um, being loose in the hips and having the ability to keep their leverage on a receiver that's moving at them full speed uh, forward. Uh, so the athleticism needed for the defensive back position, obviously going backwards, uh, doing this type of drill, um, is unparalleled at any other position in football because they're working with a receiver who's running full speed at them forward. How critical is it to uh, work with your defensive backs in a phase like this without introducing receivers in into the mix in terms of drills? Uh, it's, it's really important uh, for them to gain some confidence and feel more comfortable with the movements, uh, especially early in practice and early in the year, and be able to obviously transition into um, working against receivers afterwards.